I feel like I should go ahead and make this video just to have like general advice and help for people who are possibly thinking about moving to China or you know just going for a short trip maybe you're going to go to China to teach English and have never been there uh, I lived in a city called Hangzhou for about six months Hangzhou is really close to it's in East China it's really close to Shanghai so in that time being a black American I did pick up some of you know some of the ways and the culture so I feel like I should be able to help people Hey there YouTube land Nahajible here and I feel like I should go ahead and make this video for anybody that's considering traveling in China uh, possibly going out there for studies or maybe even going out there to teach English I used to live in China for about six months staying in Hangzhou attending university and during that time I did pick up a lot of a lot of the culture and I do have advice for people who would like to you know go out there first off if you're a foreigner regardless if you know a lot of Chinese or even a little bit when you come into those situations when you're trying to figure stuff out sometimes it could be a bit difficult you know because of unfamiliar Chinese characters or just never have been there so one thing I would definitely say is ask Chinese people for help and I'm not just talking about you know like Chinese people your age you know somebody who's like similar to you you can ask anybody for help in China regardless if this is a kid a grandparent a shopkeeper ask them for help when it comes to finding addresses you know don't walk around the block 10 times trying to find an address ask a Chinese person if you're looking to buy a certain thing what you can do is you can find out how to say that word in Chinese walk up to a Chinese person and ask them where it is etc etc it will be very convenient for you and Asian and Chinese culture they're expected to help you it would be so rude if if you're ignored or if they don't actually end up helping so take that opportunity to ask Chinese people for help it could be something as simple as pronouncing uh, a piece of paper or pronouncing a sign if you really do uh, have a genuine question they will give you an answer 99% of the time but one thing that would be even better is it's even better for you to make a real Chinese friend because if you get a Chinese friend one thing that I know is those people will be willing to bend over backwards to help you they'll spend a whole hour or two hours helping you out with the task because that's your friend Chinese people the, the average Chinese person may not have a lot of friends and if they're able to make friends with you a foreigner is one of the most important relationships they have it's really really good even better to get a Chinese friend they'll always be there and have your back Here's a few useful Chinese phrases that you're always going to need to use out there. Duo xiao qian is how much money. How much is it? When you're standing in front of a shopkeeper, you could say, Jika, duo xiao qian. Maybe if you're holding it in your hand, like, how much is this? Na, duo xiao qian. How much is that? You know? Sainali. Sainali. Sainali is where is it? So, for instance, you're looking for a bathroom. Shisho Jin Sainali. You know, where's the bathroom? You're looking for a certain school. Say the name of the school and then say Sainali. Chinese people will either point, point in the direction, they'll tell you in Chinese where it is show you on a map but it's a very good chance that you will get that assistance and find out where it is where the thing is that you're looking for 
Next up would be Ni Liza Nali. Ni Liza Nali is where are you from? Ni you Liza Nali. And there's that Nali word again, meaning where. Where are you from? The reason I put this on the list is because as a foreigner, you want you want that engagement from the Chinese people. You want them to open up and speak a little bit more. If you can hit somebody with the Ni Lai Zi Nali, that's going to get them to talk about where they're from. It's going to get them to open up. It's going to get them to embrace you even more as a foreigner. So that so that's also a good one. Ni Nat Lai Zi Nali. Fourth would be Wa Ting Budong or Ting Budong, which basically means, it literally means, I don't understand what I'm hearing, but in connotation and conversation, Wa Ting Budong would be more like, I don't understand. So if you're talking with, if you're talking with a Chinese person and something goes, you know, over your head, if something goes over your head, you can use Ting Budong, and the Chinese person will automatically understand that you know you miss what they said and probably give you more explanation. It's better that you say Ting Bu Dong than pretend like you like you understood. Chinese, the tonal language, they're talking fast. You might have missed something that could uh <laughs> that could have your ass. <laughs> okay. Next <laughs> and next word would be way. Way, way, way is basically like hey in Chinese. Like literally like the word hey. If you want to get the attention of somebody walking by. Way, you want to get the attention of a shopkeeper, ask her how much it is. Way, you want to ask this guy something. Way, it's a very good way to get people's attention. If you're in a room full of Chinese people and you just happen to say way, their heads are going to turn towards you. Good key. And this is actually a pretty good tip as well, like when it comes to getting around China. I experienced a lot of riding taxis really late at night. The train, not so much. Uh, definitely those you know, taxis and buses. Buses are super affordable. Like maybe two quad to ride on the bus, which is like, which is like 40 cents or 30 cents. It's extremely affordable compared to the train or the taxi. With the train system in China, it's really developed, so you're able to go anywhere using the train system. You're able to go to any state, any part of China, just by the trains. It's so good. I definitely recommend that you take advantage of that train system. And then also, when it comes to taxis, here's the thing about taxis. You have to remember that Taxis are not always going to be available. When it's a busy time, they're going to be available, but like later into the night, it might be hard to find a taxi. And the buses aren't running, and maybe where you're going does not have a train. And you need to know this. But definitely taxis are taxis are convenient as well. My myself, I got caught downtown in Hangzhou and, and had to kind of stay outside for a night because the buses weren't running and I didn't have money for a taxi one time. Another advantage of taxis is that you can have your own personal space and that you can speak with the taxi driver, practice your Chinese. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video here. This is Tips for Traveling in China. Go ahead and like and subscribe to the video. Uh, this is the Hajibo here, world traveler, learning many languages, 10 Asian languages at the same time, 5 European languages. Let